I'm Liliana. Welcome to my channel. Now you'll remember, on May the 1st was National Scrapbooking Day in America, North America, and the very inspirational Victoria Marie Calvin on her Facebook group set the ultimate scrapbook challenge for anyone out there who wished to participate, including us in the UK and elsewhere, to complete 10 scrapbook layouts in the space of 72 hours. This is a first for me. I'm normally quite a slow scrapbooker that likes to ponder, take her time, but I set the clock and I accomplished all 10 layouts. So I'm gonna share them with you now. Now for my first layout, which I accomplished on the Friday, I took strong inspiration from Amy Tan in her YouTube video about how she uses watercolour in her little notebook. And she did a little thing called You Are Lovely, so I've gone with exactly the same style. This was actually the only layout I made on the Friday before National Scrapbook Day, and I didn't tape the process. Uh, but I recall that I used up a little bit of the Webster's pages on my 12 by 12 background, as well as some vellum to map the photo with. Most of the other elements are from my recent quirky kits. Mind if I join you was a combi challenge for another Facebook group I belong to, which is run by the very talented Jen Box in her scrapbook group, Fun Kits Monthly Scrapbook Challenges. So I was of course focusing on the Crepe Paper Craft Market collection, which is my main background piece here. to add a splash of colour without spending too much time over it so I grabbed a couple of distress stains in the colours you see here uh, plus another yellow ink since I don't have a distress ink in yellow well not yet and I basically splattered it all over I used a selection of gold floral washi ribbon paper strips and twine to frame the band of pictures which I'm about to place between the two strips actually standing amongst the Wisley Scarecrows since they were out of bounds in reality but I wanted to pretend I was in their midst to add some humour to the page. I selected some crepe paper, craft market chipboard flowers and stickers to embellish along with a golden basket and a silver hat my mum once donated me. This is some gold smooch ink, which I've used to accent some of the letters you saw me place down. A little craft market puffy sticker, plus the ribbon which came in my quirky kit, the little pink leaves. I've used a selection of four different alphas, which probably flouts good design principles to stick with just two, but they're in only two tones, gold and aqua, so I think it actually works okay. And of course, these are all placed to form the title, Mind If I Join You, along with a little bit of titling on the picture itself, which states that it was Wisley Gardens. The title, Fun Fun Together, was basically some cutout from the Amy Tan collection. So this was me moving to the current month's Fun Kits Facebook group challenge to use Amy Tan's Rise and Shine collection. I made this on May the 1st itself because I was just busting to get into this kit. 
Uh, I had a lot of photos printed of our trip to Leamington from a couple of years back, so I've selected some cute ones of my husband and our younger son, Elias. And you'll notice I did buy the 6x6 paper pad, which I've used to layer up the pictures with. Uh, to reveal the chevrons on the top right, I've decided to use a scalpel blade. Only mid-air because I couldn't easily reach for a cutting mat, but don't do this at home, folks. Now, I don't actually have any of the 12-inch papers for Amy Town's collection, so I've improvised and drawn a similar Paisley-esque background onto white cardstock using my silhouette. A bit naughty, perhaps, but all in the name of Eric experimentation. <laughs> my disclaimer is that it's just for personal use. Anyway, so as a border to these edges, I've uh, selected a turquoise patterned washi, plus some of that gold floral that keeps making an appearance, along with some darker blue strips of paper that just happen to catch my eye from my recent layout scrap pile. I've popped the bottommost picture up on dimensional tape to add prominence, and embellished using my first ever wood veneers, the birds from John Lewis, as well as my hearts and arrows. Although I think those are actually from uh, Studio Calico. date and place I've simply used some gold and aqua title stickers and placed those up on the edges of the pictures. And gold splatters will complete the layout. Wisley Cooldown is my fourth layout and it's a quite uncomplicated double page spread. And I had printed off rather a lot of these photos of that Wisley trip a couple of years back, so this was about getting that batch into layouts. And I think this represents real life pretty well too, as you can see the exhaustion on my poor husband's face whilst the boys ate their ice cream in Wisley's rather hot orangery restaurant. As you can see, this script paper is from Crate Paper's Styleboard collection of 2013, probably quite appropriate since that's when the photos were actually taken. And I don't know quite why I got two of these papers, but I used to do that when papers went in the sales before I actually subscribed to any kit clubs. So it's gonna work well for this spread in which I'm trying to use up some of the craft market collection again and the con with the contemporary twist. I quite like how these Teresa Collins now and then aqua papers tone in with the restaurant tables. So just to give it some contrast, however, I have edged some of those with grey chalk ink. I decided to mute the main background script a little bit as well, as it's quite dark, and so I'm just smudging some gesso top and bottom. And I probably could have done more, but I was against the clock, as you know. Uh, working on two halves of the layout poses certain problems for me, by the way, as this workspace I'm on is pretty tight. I do tend to flip back and forth between the two as well uh, so you see a bit of overlapping um, and I can appreciate that it does look a little bit confusing in the process but it's all just to make sure I get the correct alignment and balance out the elements properly uh, so the end result does at least make sense. I got to use quite a few of those craft market stickers you know the camera the arrow those sweet little day month year stickers and I decided to place in the bottom left of the photograph title was a font I cut on my cameo having pre-painted the background with silver and white paints to give them a streaky look which I was going for and I outlined those with my trusty Faber-Castell black pen to give a little pop and since I had some round glass beads in my stash I brought those out as well to give a slightly icy cool sparkle and I scattered across the pages with some artiste gold misting spray to finish off. I love the gold in this summer layout. Today's 60 
is perhaps a topsy-turvy title on a Tesco's Halloween badge, would you believe, which my mum gave me as an upcycle challenge. This layout is about my smashing mother-in-law turning 60 and our boys presenting her with birthday gifts. I used the textures, stripy paper as the main background, double matting the photo cluster onto both sides of the thrifty one from one sheet of 12 by 12. These papers are of course from the Craft Market collection by Crate Paper. Sadly, I'd worked the camera just a little too hard on the Saturday of the challenges, <laughs> so it cuts out just as I'm positioning the Maya Rose scalloped chipboard pieces, which I later sprayed with gold ink. And I used a lot of Craft Market puffy stickers on this one too, as well as white and gold twine from my stash. I experimentally finished off with some of the artsy black mist splatter, but in hindsight I definitely prefer the Windsor & Newton Indian ink for this job, because that one bled a little bit. Shall I compare thee to a carbuncle? It's basically a fun play on words to highlight the juxtaposition of one quaint and one rather ugly building on Stratford-upon-Avon's Henley Street. My base piece is a craft market 12 by 12 called Craftsman and looks a bit like parquet flooring which I like. I've matted my photos onto a muted grey pattern paper though and this I don't know the brand of. But I've also used a grey cloudy with pink polka dot paper called Kiss Me Neon by Kaisy Art. And that's a French paper line, which I really adore because of the quality and design of their papers. But I've only ever bought them in the sale, mind you. I, I tended to do that. I inked all the edges in grey to define them. Rather than framing Shakespeare's birthplace, which is the beautiful old house you see, I used a chipboard frame to make a feature of the concrete I saw. The camera I've just placed to use the craft market chipboards, really. And onto the grey tag, which I initially cut out with the Sizzix and then trimmed down. Well, I brought out my Beanboard Alphas by Jilly Bean Soup to make up the title in a deliberately ramshackle way, mixing the upper and lower cases for emphasis. And I used a variety of tile letter stickers and gold glitter alphas to make up the beginning of the title on the tag. Lifted, of course, from Shakespeare's famous and recognisable Sonnet 18. I then began to secure the word carbuncle across the bottom of the picture cluster over some unravelled gold thread and subtle dabs of spun sugar distress stain. sticks me and my big ideas one saying favorite which is pointing to Shakespeare's birthplace and the brown one saying hello which I proceeded with tile stickers to read uh hello of course an expression to mean what are you doing there ugly building I spelt it with two R's on purpose <laughs> I've given the tag some dimension before adhering that down and writing Stratford upon Avon plus some Panduro tile stickers and an old rub-on stating February for the date. I found an old glassine bag and a turquoise scrap cut exactly that shape from an old layout which I thought would do the trick up top. And then I splatted a bit more of that spun sugar distress stain here and there along with Heidi Swap's peach colour shine mist to complete. layout specs is probably not my favorite in all honesty so the pictures are of my four-year-old boy Elias trying them on in amusement 
and of me trying to pose in them, even though I'm not actually that chuffed about having them. Welcome, my middle age. Anyway, so I lay down some texture paste rather experimentally through two different masks to create a background over the cork paper. And I selected a couple of wooden frames for our faces, which are from the works. And my Fisker's deckle edge ruler isn't used all that often, but I thought I'd use that to tear my edges here. And I swiped some green distress stains over the dictionary print to liven it up. And I found a crepe paper branding strip as well. So you'll see me laying those down along with some other scraps in just a second. There we are. And uh, yeah, I've used these scraps and stuff to layer up three separate clusters around the page. That and some washi tape. Now that glasses and moustache stamp came with a craft stamper magazine several months ago and just seemed fitting to use here. And I've edged a lot of these layers with chalk ink as you've seen me do. Now I've had one of those super clips tools for a number of years, too many to mention. And so I just went with the white one there to kind of put on the little manila file emulating some kind of medical notes. And I had a few Sizzix tags around as well, so I've cut out the teal and turquoise and some beige scraps from previous layout, and sometimes I just do that, I make tags when I'm clearing up, and I've slotted those in here and there. Now if you can't pick it up, you probably can't, Those some of those manila tags have got some gold letter set letters impressed all over them after I ran them through the Sizzix to emboss them, and someone out there so kindly shared that in the scrapbook community, so if it was you, please claim that, it was a really brilliant idea, so thank you. Now that teal twine I just can't use enough of, I'm always looking for an excuse, so I'm going to be making a few bows in the tags here, and uh, just to mention there, I've also stuck down the Specsavers actual logo from my tiny prescription card, uh, just because I like the colours, why not, eh? And um, to make those glasses pop a little bit, I'm just drawing around some black ink and gold outlines, uh, one around each pair. And I'm going to be anchoring down the top tag up there just with one of those diamonds from the Craft Market collection. Just the one, and just because. And just to tell you, those foam hearts were probably the first embellishment I ever made. Uh, with hand cutting round the heart shape and punching a little daisy. Cute, hey? making this layout, I've humorously come to discover that taking a pit stop is a euphemism in certain parts of the world for going to the dunny. I only wish I could have claimed that double entendre as my own, but unfortunately, much as I love title play, that is not the story here at all. So anyway, I've gone with some white cardstock background and matted onto a frame that I cut from an old Teresa Collins flowers paper, which I've also flipped for the matting to reveal the top coloured houndstooth design. And I like this cut print mask, so I've drawn from the picture of my boys at the cafe drinking orange juice to create background interest. And I also wanted to create subtle repetition of the houndstooth, so I've decided to lay down some texture paste through this Heidi swap mask just white on white. And I've grabbed this Kiss Me Neon by Kaisy Art to use the reverse of the grey clouds and pink polka dot paper that I've used before, onto which is printed lots of tiny arrows in triangular formation and this company's abbreviation, which is K-Art, printed within. Bold bit of self-advertising there, methinks, but hey, c'est la vie, as the beautiful French do say. And of course I've edged that with some chalk ink. And I've also incorporated some dotty gold and aqua plus symbol washies. Um, yeah. The turquoise tag at the top is from Craft Market, along with the pink arrow and the teal label that I've cut for the illusion of length and onto which I'll be writing the date. Now I've framed Elias 
with a chipboard piece and wanting to maximise the use of the sticker sheet I've also cut round a gold pinked circle just the waist edging of a sticker and so I've used that to frame a little wooden clock piece since we were in a cafe effectively killing time and I've no idea where I picked up that turquoise felt lettering from but I'm glad to be using that up to make the title and same with the old orange flare badge and orange brad and some gold rub-ons here and there an arrow star hearts geotag all lovely and then I'll be writing our location and the boys names in various spots sprinkling a little colour shine peach and it's finished <laughs> My Enjoy Life layout, which could equally as well be called You and Me, or Play, Laugh, Grow, depending on which pre-printed element most catches your eye, came together really quickly, perhaps because I was on a roll, but also because I set my timer, and so I did it in 30. And incidentally, just over here I'm showing you my smile layout, which is inspired by the amazing Amy Tan in her design on time, and I'm always in awe about how she can create a layout in 15 minutes. Anyway, I didn't do that apart the NSD challenge, but it just happened to be on the other side of my album, so I thought I'd show you and share a little bit about that. So back to my present layout, which we can call Enjoy Life. Um, now, I have a bit of wallpaper kicking around from my early scrapbooking days, so I've carefully gutted the centre to use here, and I'm going to save that quarter inch frame for the last of my ten layouts, which is coming next. Right now, this is number nine for the Victoria Marie challenge. And I laid the textured wallpaper onto the Flea Market crate paper from 2013. I love those yellow stripes and the pop it gives by being round the edge. I layered the picture of Elias and me in Leamington onto the houndstooth Teresa Collins I've cut and promptly selected literally the first two cards that came from the pack of those Panduro design cards I bought in Sweden back in March. As you can see, just outlining the papers and um, just to also mention that I grabbed the dictionary scrapbook paper from that specs layout back there and cut a strip to layer be beneath the pictures and, uh, and then I flipped the very same paper to reveal that turquoise diagonal stripe which will layer under the photo just nicely and I found a random scalloped branding strip as well so I used that to ground the layout and because the colours tied in quite nicely and here I've made a jolly big mess with the doily mask so <laughs> I've covered it up with the real McCoy to uh, hopefully hide the fact. I just love those Kaiser Craft wooden trees and I just thought that would anchor the, the edge there nicely of the card. So glad to use the last of my fabric and pearl flowers too. Not to mention the craft market chipboard pieces. And then a bit of journaling in and some black ink splatters just complete the page along with some puffy sticker triangles for bunting and a little bit of twine. It was now past midnight, 
as I embarked on this final layout. Take time to submit this, the final layout for the challenge. Thanks, of course, to World Time Zones. So I've called this one Cousins, because they are. And here, the basic grey's yellow umbrella is my main page background, framed with that flimsy hessian wallpaper you'll remember that I cut out on the last layout. So by now you'll recognise that I've used these scraps before, so it is literally what's on my desk. And I love using that smooch gold ink just to accent the edges. And I was also keen to use some more washi tape too, so I've gone for some of that, as well as that tag with some of the Letraset gold stamping on it. Well, the uh, embossing, I should say. So I'm starting to adhere some of these craft market chipboard pieces and I have to say that the paint theme that I'm working here with has no actual correlation to the picture they're just dressing up um, unless of course you associate paint and messiness with boys but I have to say that I try and steer away from stereotypes wherever possible and I particularly love for that very reason to incorporate pink onto boys pages a colour I have to say that both of my boys do enjoy um, not so much their cousin though, <laughs> much to my amusement. So uh, I'm just using up some scraps as I've said to form the clusters all around and, um, and also onto the thickers and alphas with some final touches of gold smooch going on and I can declare that I'm almost done. Well, thank you so much for watching as I talked through all of my National Scrapbook Challenge pieces. The challenge is long since done, the winners have their prize packs, and I have not 10 but 11 new challenge pieces, new scrapbook layouts in my album, which is bonus for me and after all, the final aim. So happy scrapping everyone and I'll see you again soon for some more. Bye! Bye.